Good morning, fourth graders. That is how you say good morning in American Sign Language. It's Miss Mayani here today, and I have a special guest. My cat um, has decided to join us for today's lesson, so we'll just kind of see if he decides he wants to stay, but he seems pretty comfy right now. Um, so this week, we've been spending a lot of time reading the story Flight by Robert Burley, illustrated by Mike Wimmer and published by the Developmental Studies Center. Um, we practice giving reasons to support our opinions, determining important ideas, and supporting details. No, um, So today we're gonna do some writing about reading. As we remember, this book tells the true story about Charles Lindbergh's historic flight from New York to Paris. Um, when the author of this book, Robert Burley, was writing it, he did a lot of research about Charles Lindbergh and the details of the flight um, and what he learned about them were used in the book. Since Burley wrote about Charles Lindbergh's experience um, and Charles didn't write this book about himself, this book is an example of a secondhand account um, of an event. So hopefully you have a copy of the first hand first and second hand accounts of Charles Lindbergh's flight. Um, if you don't, that's okay. Okay. So I'm going to read an excerpt from the second hand account from the story Flight. A telephone wire stretches across the far end of the field. To touch this wire will plunge the plane into the ground. There is an extra fuel tank in front of the cockpit. Because of this, Lindbergh cannot see straight ahead. Will the spirit of St. Louis with its over 5,000 pounds rise into the air? To keep the plane lighter, Lindbergh is leaving behind his radio and parachute. Will that be enough? He has been up all night getting ready. A thought runs back and forth through his mind. It is still possible to turn back, to return home. And yet another thought is stronger. I have been waiting my entire life for this flight. Lindbergh lowers his goggles and nods his head. Go! Men on each side push to help the plane roll over the soggy ground. The little plane bumps forward, gaining speed. The wheels leave the ground, then touch back. The plane seems to hop, taking its last bow to earth. On the third try, it stays aloft. It soars above the wire by only 20 feet. The spirit of St. Louis rises in the air. It is 7.52 in the morning, New York time. Lindbergh points his plane toward the Atlantic and beyond, toward Paris, over 30 hours away. So in this second-hand account, what did you notice about the way the author wrote about this takeoff? So here are some details that you might have noticed. In the secondhand account written by Robert Burley, you might have noticed things like how he used pronouns like he and his, how he described the weight of the plane by describing it as being 5,000 pounds, he describes the bumpy takeoff and how the plane bounced up and down before getting into the air. He tells a little about what Charles is thinking about um, possibly turning back and not go doing the flight. And it describes the setting and what the environment looks like. Charles Lindbergh also wrote an autobiography of his, um, of his experience leading up to the flight from New York to Paris and details of the flight itself and events of life after um, he landed in Paris. Because Lindbergh wrote this book himself, it is a first-hand account of his own experiences, not a second-hand account like Robert Burley and Flight. This is a second-hand account. Um, Charles Lindbergh's autobiography is a first-hand account. So I'm gonna read um, this excerpt from his autobiography aloud. And as I'm reading, I want you to notice how Charles Lindbergh writes about his experience of the takeoff and what new things you learn about it from his perspective. Nothing about my plane has the magic quality of flight, but men begin stumbling off from the wing struts. We're going faster. A hundred yards of runway passes. The last man drops off the struts. The stick's wobbling changes to lurching motion as ailerons protest unevenness of surface. How long can the landing gear stand such strain? 5,000 pounds crushing down upon it. I keep my eyes fixed on the runway's edge. I must hold the plane straight. One wheel off and the spirit of St. Louis would ground loop and splinter in the mud. Pace quickens. Turf becomes a blur. 
turf is like grass. This tail skid lifts off the ground. I feel the load shifting from wheels to wings, but the runway is slipping by quickly. The halfway mark is just ahead and I have nothing like flying speed. The engine's turning faster, smoothing out. The propeller's taking better hold. I can tell by the sound. What RPM? That means rotations per minute for the engine. But I can't look at instruments. I must hold the runway, not take my eyes from its edge for an instant. An inch or off on stick or rudder and my flight will end. The halfway mark streaks past, seconds now, to decide, close the throttle or will I get off? The wrong decision means a crash, probably in flames. I pull the stick back firmly and the wheels leave the ground. Then I'll get off, the wheels touch again. I ease the stick forward, almost flying speed, and nearly 2,000 feet of field ahead, a shallow pool on the runway, water spews up from the tires, a, wind, a wing drops, lifts as I shove aileron against it, the entire plane trembles from the shock. Off again, right wing low, pull it up, ease back onto the runway, left rudder, hold to center, must keep straight, another pull, water drumming on the fabric, the next hop's longer, I could probably stay in there, but I let the wheels touch once more, lightly, a last bow to earth, a gesture of humility before it. Best to have plenty of control with such a load, and control requires speed. The spirit of St. Louis takes herself off the next time. Full flying speed, the controls taut, alive, straining, and still a thousand feet to the web of telephone wires. Now I have to make it. There's no alternative. It'll be close, but the margin has shifted to my side. I keep the nose down, climbing slowly, each second gaining speed. If the engine can hold out for one more minute, five feet, 20, 40, wires flash by underneath, 20 feet to spare. Green grass and bunkers below, a golf links, People looking up, a low tree-covered hill ahead, a shallow bank right to avoid it, still grasping the sit stick tightly as though to steady the plane with my own strength, hardly daring to drop a wing for the turn, hardly daring to push the rudder. The spirit of St. Louis seems balanced on a pinpoint, as though the slightest movement of controls would cause it to topple over and fall. 5,000 pounds suspended from those little wings, 5,000 pounds balanced on a blast of air. What did you notice about how Charles Lindbergh writes about the takeoff? What did you learn about it, about his version of accounts of the event? How is the first-hand account similar to the second-hand account? How is it different? In the first-hand account um, written by Charles Lindbergh in his autobiography, Spirit of St. Louis, you might have noticed how he used pronouns like I, me, my, which shows a first-person point of view. Um, he gave a lot of details about each moment of the takeoff, way more details than the second-hand account. Um, he also described the weight of the plane, but by comparing it to things, he compared it to like an overloaded truck. Um, and really, he just used a lot of details that only he could have known because he was the only person there. How can you tell that Charles Lindbergh wrote the second excerpt? Which do you think is more interesting, the first-hand account or the second-hand account? Why? I want to model about the ways in which the first-hand account and the second-hand account of Charles Lindbergh's flight across the Atlantic are similar um, and different. The first and second-hand accounts of the plane's takeoff are similar in a few ways. I'm going to first write about how they are similar, and then I'm going to talk about how they are different. So I'm going to start by writing, both excerpts include details that allow the reader to infer how Lindbergh feels on the morning of his flight. Both experts also include details about the weight of the plane and the distance between the plane and the telephone wires as it passes over them. Now I'm going to write about how the excerpts are different. The excerpts are different because the secondhand account uses facts from the event to tell a story through a narrator. It is written from the third person point of view. The first hand account is written from the first person point of view. 
Charles Lindbergh is telling his own story. The first-hand account also includes more supporting details that help the reader imagine what it was like during the takeoff. So here I want to make sure that I'm providing some evidence of this. For, so I'm going to write, for example, Lindbergh wrote, the plane creeps heavily forward and the spirit of St. Louis feels more like an overloaded truck. So I want you to write about the ways in which the first-hand account and the second-hand account are similar and different to each other. I want you um, to be looking at the first-hand account and the second-hand account excerpts um, of Charles Lindbergh's flight, the one, the first-hand account that Charles Lindbergh wrote himself and the second-hand account that Robert Burley wrote about the event. Um, and make sure that you include reasons and evidence and you can use transitional words and phrases to help you. Some um, transitional words and phrases that you might use are, for example, or another reason I think this, or I think this because. Um, those are all great ways to provide supporting evidence to, um, to what you are writing about. When you're done writing about your reading, I would really love to encourage my fourth graders to read what they wrote to um, another person or just to read it out loud. Well, fourth graders, that's all I have for you this week. I really enjoyed getting to read with you and share in our Making Meaning lessons this week and practicing all those wonderful reading comprehension strategies and skills. Um, now I'm going to um, have to go take a break and cuddle with my kitty here. And uh, I hope that you all are doing well. And I hope that I get to um, read for you again very soon. All right. Bye.